It's a game changer. It's an environmental champion. This car will revolutionize the way we think about transportation. We hear this kind of hopeful hype about a lot of vehicles offhand, we can think of the Tesla Roadster, Chevrolet Volt, and Fisker Karma and sometimes, it even rings true. But few pieces of fanciful transportation have seemed as far-fetched, at least at first glance, as the 2E, scheduled to be produced just six months from now by California-based Aftera Motors. We recently paid the company a visit to take a quick spin in two of its latest prototypes and to see how close this wingless bird is to hatching. Built in where else, California. A tour of the spotless Aftera facilities, located in Vista, California, gave us a glimpse of where the first production models will be built, some 5,000 per year, according to the company. The Aftera's 300-pound composite body will be made off-site at a nearby factory, and an additional production facility is scheduled and will be capable of building another 20,000 or so Aftera's once it comes online. At this early stage, most of the space in the production area was open, but several unpainted body shells were sprinkled about, as well as a few early prototypes, two of which we would be able to drive. One featured a near-production spec interior, while the other was a mule on which Aftera was tweaking the suspension geometry and the location of battery components. Bigger than expected. Aftera is Greek for wingless flight, the company says, and the little teardrop two-seater indeed does look as though it could fly, if it had actual wings in place of its skinny front tires encased in wheel pants. In spite of its curious shape and three-wheel configuration, the two-passenger Aftera has far more style and presence and far less dorkiness than is conveyed in pictures. Sure, from some angles particularly from up high the lack of outboard rear wheels looks bizarre. But at a whopping 77 inches, the front track is unexpectedly wide, and the tail is high enough to serve as a buffet table. The LED tail lamps double as a charge indicator when the vehicle is plugged in, illuminating in 25% increments from left to right across the back. A full charge is possible in 8 hours from a 110 volt outlet or 2 to 4 hours with a 220 volt source. The hid headlamps feature flush fitting glass, as do the two-piece side windows, rear quarter windows, and skinny backlight. The latter is integrated into a hatchback that is set so far inboard that loading cargo will certainly be a Herculean challenge. The rooftop can be fitted with solar cells to power a ventilation system that will keep the interior and exterior temperatures closely matched. Our first drive was in the prototype with the real interior. Slipping inside the 2E was easy enough, but the process of sliding under the door and then swinging your legs up over the threshold might not be too easy for the arthritic. An upcoming design change is set to swing the rearmost edge of the door more forward, getting it out of the way of your head. Once situated in the thin, manually adjustable seats, passengers find themselves separated only by a thin console and an even thinner armrest. With such inboard positioning, the cabin offers head and elbow room in the range of a smart Fortwos, only with several more feet of cargo space in the tapered shell behind the passengers. Modest amenities, abundant technologies. Lightweight, recycled materials abound inside the TUI, yet the environment is as fresh and clean as a pink berry frozen yogurt shop. The dashboard is simple, with an LCD digital monitor in front of the driver and a center-mounted computer readout that will offer many layers of functionality. According to Aftera, those include the operation of a number of available audio, communications, and navigation systems and, of course, vital vehicle systems. The two ES ergonomics are relatively sound i.e., the pedals are down by your feet, and turn stocks are where one would expect them to be, although we're not sure if the capacitive touch buttons on the center stack, a la Chevy Volt, will be easy to locate at speed. The windshield offers a wide and vast view of the road ahead and the glossy skirted wheels on either side, although the view out the back is about as expansive as that from an 84 Lamborghini Countach. A rear view camera will be on the options list and that would be the first box we checked. The after a 2E so named for its passenger count and electric motor, although gas and extended range series hybrid models are also on the drawing board started out as a featherweight, minimalist, 
efficiency-focused proposition, says after of founder Steve Fambro. But due to customer requests, options including leather and upholstery and multi-speaker sound systems are being developed. There already is even an iPhone application that will allow Aptera drivers to check their car's state of charge, turn on the air conditioning or heat remotely, while it's parked and plugged into the wall, or view a range map featuring concentric circles that show roughly how far the 2E can travel from its current location, providing that the route is flat and traffic free. And according to Chief Marketing Officer Marcus McCammon, potential technology suitors are regularly approaching Aptera with other interesting ideas, many of which could be implemented in time for its October 2009 introduction. The iPhone app, for example, was developed in less than a week, he says. Behind the will of the beast. Unfortunately, we didn't get the chance to really hammer on the Aptera wouldn't want to go breaking the prototypes, now would we, but we did gain some good speed, up to about 50 miles per hour, and cook through a few turns. The electrically assisted brakes and steering felt somewhat distant, and the ride was definitely on the firm side. However, body roll was virtually non-existent, and stability was excellent. More insulation may be necessary to quell road noise and motor whine, but overall, the 2E behaved far more normally than its exterior might suggest. The current electric motor, mounted up front, has the equivalent of about 70 HP and gets its juice from lithium-based batteries, of a still undisclosed composition, with 17 to 22 kilowatt hour of capacity. Range should be about 100 miles with two people and a healthy amount of cargo on board. There are three drive modes, D1 for economy focused, range extending driving, D2 for normal driving with acceleration in the range of, say, the Toyota Prius, and D3 for sportier driving, offering a big current flow. During our time behind the wheel, we spent most of our time in D3 surprised, just to see if a smack on the go pedal could indeed produce a burst of current flow. It can with the jolt followed by a smooth but urgent increase in speed. Combined with the cockpit feel of the wraparound windshield glass and fuselage-like cabin, the 2E on full tilt feels not unlike a Piper or Cessna on takeoff. The second prototype we drove had been freshly built using new suspension geometry, but it had unassisted brakes and steering and some relocated battery components. Most battery bits on the production cars will be located under the passengers, for a roughly 70-30% front-to-rear distribution of the 2ES approximately 1,700 pounds. Although we didn't have a chance to strap test equipment to either vehicle, we fully expect the 2E to meet its 0-60 to 60 mph acceleration target of fewer than 10 seconds. Top speed is said to be more than 90 miles per hour, which certainly won't be drag limited. We're exceeding our targets so far, said a grinning chief engineer Tom Reichenbach, a former Ford racing engineer who also led the development of the Ford GT. And when we asked McCammon if he had any thoughts about the marketability of a more powerful after a for green-minded hot hose, he said, I have lots of thoughts about that. Think about it I came from SRT and Celine. We plan to return to the facilities between now and the car's fall introduction to monitor the Aptera's evolution and get more in-depth driving impressions as the vehicle's dynamics are sorted out. Strong egos only, please. Our drive wasn't on public roads, so we couldn't gauge onlookers' reactions to the 2E or ask them if they would consider paying Aptera's estimated asking price of between $25,000 and $40,000. But we can only imagine what interesting comments and comparisons that a white tadpole-shaped, wingless plane-looking car will ultimately invite. We're told by those who've driven it on the road that people are not shy, and we look forward to hearing the reactions personally. Certainly, not everyone will love it, but everyone will have something to say about it.